The following information, views, and opinions are for entertainment purposes. It is not serious. It is not real. Enjoy the show. Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to the Course I View Podcast. I'm your host, Brian. Oh, Lord. Y'all know where I'm here. Y'all, y'all know y'all know where I'm at. Um, we're recording on Saturday, by the way. So yesterday, news broke mm. that the Atlanta Hawks traded Dejounte Murray to the New Orleans Pelicans. Right. You know, before the podcast started, I was listening to Kendrick and Drake diss tracks because. This type of energy I wanted to come in for this podcast. Um, Cause there there's a few people that I need to address. Mm, okay. Cause Let's get into it. these people I'm very mad about and they're the reason why LeBron can't get ring number five. Um number one, I wanna I wanna talk to Rob Palenka and just his trash ability at being a GM, at being whatever the hell he is in the front office. I don't know if he's the president. I don't know if he's just the GM. I don't know what the hell is going on with the Lakers organization right now. But to find yourself not giving the Atlanta Hawks a similar offer than whatever the Pelicans just gave to them, that should be a fireable offense. Mm. Just let's just break this down real quick. DeJounte Murray, it cost the Pelicans Larry Nance, Dyson Daniels, and two future first round picks. You couldn't have done that? You couldn't have gave the Atlanta Hawks a similar offer? Why did it take the Pelicans only have to giving those many pieces in order to get DeJounte Murray, an all-star caliber player, a guy that averages 20, a guy that can score, a, a, a guy that is a significant upgrade at the point guard position to D'Angelo Russell. And you couldn't give him that offer. Rob Palenka... You, you need to thank your lucky stars that Jeannie Buss is the owner because you keep getting away with damn near robbery every time I see your face. You're an habitual liar. You're somebody that keeps hanging on to the name of Kobe Bryant because you were his agent. How do you have LeBron James and Anthony Davis two superstars on your team and you fail to surround your superstars with quality role players you fail to surround them with the right pieces to compete for a championship it blows my mind and yet you still have a job who's next on the list let's see I want to talk about Landry Fields the GM for the Atlanta Hawks I'm I'm gonna add you on the op list because I know what this is. I know what you're bitter about. Bro, you haven't been in the league in like almost 10 years, and yet you're still mad that LeBron kicked your ass? Come on, bro. Like, let, let's just, we already know what this is about. You were on the New York Knicks, and you were on the Atlanta Hawks, the two teams that LeBron signed every time he played them, and you were on the court. We already know what, what happened. LeBron was cooking your ass. And now what what do you do? You don't want to trade DeJounte Murray to the Lakers because, one, DeJounte Murray wants to go to the Lakers. He respects LeBron, and you don't like LeBron. Let's get that out the way because you demanded Austin Reeves in return, and the Lakers were like, no, we're not giving you Austin Reeves. And what did you do later on in the year? You... You got a trade package that was worse. You got Larry Nance and Dyson Daniels. We could have offered a similar trade package, but no, 
You asked for Austin Reeves. I already know. I already know what the agenda is. You just don't like LeBron. You don't want LeBron to win, and that's fine. You know what? We're gonna add you to the op list. I hope you like Zachary Richardson. I hope he pans out. I hope he becomes the best three and D role player that they project him to be. I really do, because that is gonna be your franchise for the next five years. Zachary Richardson. And maybe Trey Young. You're probably going to trade Trey Young anyway. So you're going to be left with Zachary Richardson. I hope it all goes well for you. Who's next on the list? D'Angelo Russell. Lord. You're, you're definitely on the list. I see what you did there. You waited until DeJounte Murray got traded to opt into your contract. What a coincidence. <laughs> you know, I see what this is all about. And and not only did you opt in literally right after it hit 12 o'clock midnight, people damn near asleep by now. I hear the news at like 1 a.m. And I'm like, this motherfucker right here, this petty motherfucker going to opt in. And he's like, I want to win. I want to I want to play for J.J. Reddick. You know damn well what you were doing. Number one, the market wasn't good for you anyway. So we all knew you were pretty much screwed from there. So you 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 were pretty much damned if you do, damned if you don't. We knew we knew you didn't like Darvin Ham. We knew that. But 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 you do you think the Lakers like you? The Lakers are trying to trade your ass, and you knew it. And you knew that if you waited until the last minute, they were gonna be hamstrung. And congratulations, you played us. You played us. You better hope. You better pray. That we don't trade your ass. Because I'm, I guarantee you, Rob Palenka's going to be taking calls. And if Rob Palenka doesn't change this roster, it's up. Mm. It's up. Rob Palenka, you better, hey, you better you better chill. You better go in hiding. Because them Laker fans are going to be coming for you. <laughs> Because if you, if, you don't, if, you don't, if you don't make a trade, if you don't do something with all of these picks, with all of these expiring contracts, with all of these team-friendly contracts, it's up. It's up. I'm telling you. Let me ask you this. And then we're going to go, we're going to, you know, we're going to start the show. Imagine this. You have two superstars. The hardest part is done. You have two superstars, two superstars in the top 10. One of your superstars had one of the best years of their career. The other one, you know, he's up there in age, but he had one of his most efficient years offensively. Mm -hmm. You have a quality role player in Austin Reeves, and you have team-friendly contracts, and you have future picks, future first-round and second-round picks. From your perspective, how do you feel about your – if you're a GM, how do you feel about – just that reality. So you said two superstar players. Yes, in the top ten. Mm -hmm. One, both of them just played, I think, the most games they ever played for your team. Mm. I was like, we gotta get more. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta make some shake. I gotta get make it get the phones working. Do you do you feel confident that? With everything that you have at your disposal, that you can create a contender. You have a you have a bunch of you still have a good number of picks. You have a bunch of team friendly contracts, and it's not like the players that you have are terrible. Like they can contribute to teams, right? And you have two superstars. Well, you see the thing, me you'd have to if I was in that position. I would have to accept that I got to look at it from a broader perspective. I mean, listen, I'm coaching the L.A. Lakers. This ain't the Orlando Magic here. So teams are going to play hardball when it comes to deals. I'm going to have to overpay for something. But if I truly believe this is a contending type roster, you got to be okay with that. You got to play the market. It is what it is. You can't be sitting there with your arms pouted, taking, taking your ball from the court, because they want to overcharge you because of your status and your position in the league. That's just that's just what comes with the territory. So I mean, you either you either hold them or fold them, 
And, and, and hey, if y'all want to sit up here and sit on assets and not get nothing done and get with, get the same results every year, then I guess y'all just comfortable with that. But if I'm trying to build a championship roster and I got two superstars on the team, well, we're going to have to suck it up, pause. Like, just you don't have to overpay. It is what it is. You got the picks. You got players. I mean, somebody wants them. They always get picked up as soon as they leave. So, you know, Rob Palenka, he said that, man, this sec- this uh, this new CBA is so hard to do deals. Like, shut up. Shut up. Look what look what Brad Stevens did. He was able to get Chris Stops. He was able to get Drew Holiday and he got back picks. Picks. Come on now. I don't want to hear that excuse. <laughs> this dude is a liar. This dude tries to find any excuse in the book to save his ass. That's who he is. He don't really want to win for real. He don't really want to keep he don't want to make sure that he does right for LeBron. He just wants to save his ass. He just wants to do good for the for the for the owner. And that's the problem. They don't want to win for real. And when you have two superstars, it shouldn't be this difficult to find talent, to trade for talent. But here we are today. We're in the same position we were last year. And I have and I am I don't know where we're going to go. That was the player we needed. That was the trade package that got the Pelicans, DeJounte Murray. And you couldn't come up with a similar, if not better, trade package. It's just incompetence. It's just the guy that's there for the ride and doesn't care for real and makes all the excuses in the world. And until I see some real action, until I see growth, LeBron ain't going to get ring five. He's just going to go on off in the sunset, and he'll be a Laker legend for life. But he's going to end up like Will, one ring with the Lakers and four rings so and Better six than losses. no rings. <laughs> yeah, 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 obviously, <laughs> obviously. But at the same time, you know, this was – I'm not going to say it's a failure, but I feel like with a team like the Lakers – with the caps, with the cap situation, with all the requisite team-friendly contracts that you have, it shouldn't be this difficult. And right now, as a fan, I've had enough. I'm pissed. I'm pissed, man. Like I'm tired, bro. I'm tired. You're so lucky we're in an office. Like if this was like in my house right now, I would be just absolutely going insane. But I'm gonna keep it mellow. You know. I don't think you should be. DeJounte, he's a good player, but I don't think he was the savior. I mean, he's a significant. He would have helped, but I mean. He's a significant upgrade. The moment he would have waved off Braun late game to take a, a take a mid-range jumper, you would have won, wanted to storm the court and put hands on that man. It's better than D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell, he can't, he can't, he's not quick at all. He can't beat his man off the dribble. He needs a screen every time. The dude, the dude, he can't, he can't go to the lane because he's slow. He's yeah, slow so. as a snail. DeJounte Murray, he's athletic. He can, he can defend. I'm not saying he's the greatest defender in the world, but he's significantly better than D'Angelo Russell ever was. Like, come on now, man. Like, he, he can score just as well, if not better than D'Angelo Russell. He can shoot. He can, he can defend. He can drive to the paint. The dude is athletic. He can catch lobs. Like, this is all the stuff D'Angelo Russell can't do. He actually cares about winning. He doesn't just act like he cares. Like, no, he actually cares about winning. He has passion. You can see it in the way that he talks. The dude, the dude loves the game. Like it's not, it's not a, it's not a, it's not just something that he says. Like no, he loves the game. And for for Rob Palenka to just sit on his ass and not do anything, it's just ridiculous, man. I don't know. I don't know where we go from here. I don't. I don't know where we go. What are you gonna do? Go to go to Utah and ask for Larry Marketing? Yeah, right. 
I, I, he's not going to do that <laughs> at all because he already knows what the trade package is going to be. Five first round picks. Rob Pelink is not going to give him five first round picks because he's too scared. He doesn't want to give up all that capital. He wants to low for all of these GMs. You have to give, you have to overpay sometimes. You cannot lowball these GMs. You can't. Sounds like another GM I know very well. Talking about Brad Stevens? Not Brad Stevens, Danny Age? No, I'm talking about a GM that's cheap. Oh, t- um, Jerry Jones? Yes. Oh, um, not Jerry Jones, but, well, Steve, he is, yeah, he is J- cheap. But Jerry Steven, Jones. yeah, whatever. Same thing. Same thing. He's, man. You know how many players said they want to play for the Cowboys, and then Jerry and Steven are like, oh, that's cool. Here's $5. And then they're like, are you crazy? And then they'd be going somewhere else. I'm like, they ain't even offering me no money. I'm like, oh, my goodness. So I, I feel I feel your pain, brother. But it, I, I just had to accept it. It just is what it is. And we have two superstars. Anywho, I don't want to <laughs> die. I want to I go into it a little bit, you know, as far. Let's, let's transition. Uh, I want to talk about the New York Knicks because they've been making a lot of moves these past few days. So they were able to trade for Mikael Bridges. Wow, what a shocker. Like this was this was in the works for a while. Like it it was inevitable. Like right. they they had DiVincenzo, they had Brunson, they had Josh Hart. Josh Hart and them, Jalen Brunson, and they were always talking about Mikael, like you over there, like, bro, like we yeah. just need you now to make it the Villanova connection. And now they traded for him. I mean, it was a lot. Yeah. They gave up like what was it, four or five like first five round, first round picks. Five first round picks. I think it may have been some pick swaps it was, in there. Yeah, it was a it was like five picks of pick swap or something like that. Look, look. I'll say this about the move. It was a lot. It's a lot, but necessary. The contract is friendly. Yeah. So that's good. He's making like what was it, four years, ninety million, I think it was. So that's a that's a great contract in this new CBA. Jalen Brunson, he's making pennies on the dollars. Well, four years, a hundred million. Here's what I think about. Oh yeah, they also signed OG on and Obi to a massive. That that one I was like, oh they they signed. Damn. I thought they said yeah. they planned on. I didn't know they actually. Nah, they they put ink bro, the paper. They they and they said they plan on retaining Hardenstein too, right? I, I don't know how they do it. that. I, there's no way. OG, let me. I I just want to make sure. I mean, I just want to make sure that I got it right. Yeah, let me just make sure. Yeah, they they agreed to it. Okay. They agreed to mm. this. Two hundred and thirteen million dollars for OG Ananobi. Five years. God damn. But here's I the don't deal. Know about that. Here's the deal. The Knicks need to go all in this season. Put all your chips in the table. Put all your eggs in one basket. Because Jalen Brunson's deal, he has one more year and then he has a player option. So you have to go all in this season. Like, there's no ifs and buts about it. They have the most pressure to win a championship this year because there's no excuse. You have Mikel Bridges on a team-friendly deal. You have Jalen Brunson on a team-friendly deal. You were able to get one of the best contracts in NBA history, which is Jalen Brunson, four years, $100 million. You man, that that deal right there, that's one of the best free agent signings ever, because nobody thought that Jalen Brunson was going to be this good, and at the time the deal, people thought they overpaid, including yep, myself. People did four years, a hundred million for a top fifteen player. You have to take advantage of that. It reminds me of the rookie quarterback deal in the NFL, where you have this window where you're not paying your quarterback a lot of money. And if they're really good, you have to load up. You have to give as much talent as possible before they ha- before they come to the table, ask for an extension. The same thing with Jalen Brunson. So you have one year, New York. You have one year, the Knicks. And this is your time to shine. You have to put all your chips on the table. You have to put all your eggs in one basket because after this coming season, it's going to be hard for them. The cap is just the whole cap situation. They're going to be hard capped. You have to take advantage of this season. What is your thoughts on my opinion that this is the Knicks, like the Knicks are the most pressured team to win a championship this year, and they need to go all in? I agree with the they need to go all in. 
as you said, with the contracts and the new CBA, how uh, the salary cap is all thing is now. Thanks, thanks, CJ McCullum and Grant Williams. Grant Williams, y'all hated CJ McCullum. You hated the Warriors so much, you ruined the way free agency works. He sold a soul. Like, and, and they just let anybody do this stuff these days. But anywho, the most pressure to win a championship. Yes. I mean, I can't really think of any other teams that's like, like you have to win next year. Because the Celtics won their ring. They got their ring. They don't care. The Bucks. The Bucks. I mean, the, I don't know what the Bucks drafting dudes that average two points per game. I don't know what's going <laughs> on. Um, the Lakers aren't moving with any sense of urgency besides drafting Bronny in mm-hmm. the second round. Uh, the Nuggets. I mean, they are they are, they always expected to be in it as long as they got Jokic. So mm-hmm. I think they're going to re-sign Murray too. Um, the Timberwolves are still young. They still got young players. Um, I I'd agree with that. They all. I guess they did. They, I'd say they have the most pressure because they seem to be the team that's more aggressive, as far as like we making moves so we can win immediately asap. So and especially if they if they somehow find a way to re-sign Hardenstein, it'll be very interesting. Because mm-hmm. I saw a report that says they plan they want to re-sign. I don't know how that's gonna work with that all that money getting passed around. My question is with the whole Knicks, what's the plan with Julius? They going to keep him or what? I feel like you can get rid of him. I th- I th- here's the thing, though, because, again, I think, like, with Julius' contract situation, I don't think he's made – like, when you when you, you look at his he's contract – not making that much money? I don't think – like, obviously, he's making, like, more than $20 million, Matter of fact, before, before – before, don't quote me on that. Let, let me look at his contract real quick. But – so his contract he signed was four years, one hundred and seventeen million, right? Which is that's not in in the new world in the NBA. That's not a lot of money. So they're getting they have a lot of team friendly deals where you can trade these players and get some picks, maybe even some talent back. With Julius, he is an All Star caliber player. He is a guy that is very talented. If he would have stayed healthy, he may have even made first team. Not first. He, w- he would have made an all-NBA team. There would have been a possibility of him making an all-NBA because he's averaging north of like 23, 24, 24 points, and he'll get you 10 boards. So Julius is a very talented player. My thing with Julius is the way that the Knicks played last season without him Will his play style, will it disrupt the flow of the offense is my thing. Because, you know, he he likes to go one-on-one. He likes to take a lot of ill-advised, inefficient shots. My thing is, how how will, how will that work with the DiVincenzos, the Mikhail Bridges, the Josh Hart's, when, you know, they were relying a lot on the three-point shot and the spacing was a lot better. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that works. Either way, they have options that they can go to. They they can trade him. They can keep him. And they, they have options. I, I just think whatever they do, it, it better be for the benefit of the team. And they have a window. It's this season. There's no excuse. You have to win or it's a failure. Because Boston, as great as they are, they can be had with the right personnel. And I believe the Knicks... With the two wings that they have, Mikhail and OG, in order to beat the the Boston Celtics, you need wings that can defend. You need two-way wings, and they have that. They have two talented wings that can get a bucket, that can stretch the floor, and that can guard your two best players on the perimeter, and that's Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. So you have that taken care of. And then you have a shot maker in Jalen Brunson who can hit big shots. That's great. Now you need bigs. Hard to start, free agent. What's going on with you? What's, what's his name? Um, that center, Mitchell Robinson. What's going on with him? You have to figure that whole thing out. And, and another thing, we already know with Tom Thibodeau, the whole minutes thing. He gonna play his guys a lot of minutes. Yo, oh, yeah. So we have to figure that out as well. Mitchell Robinson, do you want to keep him? He's injury prone. That's a risk you, you're gonna have to make, or you're gonna have to trade him. Maybe, maybe you add Mitchell and Julius to a trade package. There's a lot of different things that they can do. 
I don't think this is the end for the Knicks. I, I think there's more moves to be had because free agency hasn't started yet, obviously. But they already made huge moves. You trade it for Mikhail and you re-sign Ochi. Huge moves. It's going to be risky. But just like with the Celtics, they took a risk on Chris Stops. Yep. And it paid off, even though he, he didn't pretty he, he didn't like play it. the rest of the series besides those two games. I mean he yeah. played a little bit of game five, but it what he didn't really it didn't really they didn't really need, way, need him yeah. so much. So so it was like really game game one and two where his services was needed. So they're gonna take a chance on OG. How is the rest of the rosters gonna look? Are you gonna keep McBride? He was a nice piece off the bench for you. Like, we, we don't know. We really don't know. But right now, this is the opportunity for them to put themselves in a position to win the Larry O'Brien trophy. And if they don't do it this season, then it's going to be an, a failure. This is their window. I like it. It's, it's, it's like I brought this up again, but it feels like NFL like. Like, you, you have those small windows. You have to capitalize on them. And this is the season they need to. Yeah, that's where I'm at with it. You think that usually, you know, the saying is that whoever wins the championship determines how team roster building goes. Yeah. You think teams are now going to just start copying the Celtics as far as we're going to have guys one through five that can shoot, stretch the floor, and have strong perimeter defenders. And one guy that can anchor the paint. You think that's the way to win now in today's NBA? The I mean, I mean, I, f- I feel like that should have always been the way. I just think they got very fortunate with with the Chris Tops thing. It was it was a risk because of his health, and they just said, you know what, f it, we'll just go all in. We'll put all our mm-hmm. chips on the table, and we'll. We'll see how it goes. And they took the risk, and they benefited from the war reward. So our team's going to – it's, it's kind of hard. Like, you know, there's not a lot of bigs like Chris Stops for Zingas. That's number one. So, I mean, it's not a lot of 7'3 True. guys that can shoot like him. And protect the paint. And protect the paint. And I, I, told, I told you this before the series started. I was like, hey, Chris Stops – I know, I know you were talking about what was I comparing him to? Was it Derek Lively or something? How how he protected mm-hmm. me? I was like, hey, Kristaps can do that stuff too now, and that's what he did. I mean, it sounds great in theory, but how many players? How like what players are out there where you can implement something like that? I just think with Boston, they're very unique in their in just their personnel. It's it's not really the play style; it's just the personnel is just so unique because how many players are out there? where you can take advantage of a situation like that. I, I just don't see it. Like, Drew Holiday, you know, two-way player. He can shoot the three. He can score. He can beat you off the dribble. Derek White as well. And then we already mentioned Chris Stops, And then you have your your two best players in, in Brown and Tatum, who are all-stars, all-NBA players. And, I mean, you have Court – what's his name? Not Luke Cornett. It was – um. The Sam? other shoot, Sam Hauser. I mean, he can shoot as well. So, yeah, you got about six six dudes that – and then you also had the veteran Al Horford in there. Yeah. You got seven guys that can shoot. You can you can obviously build a team where you have a bunch of shooters. It's just I look at the size and the versatility. That's where the Boston Celtics are very unique in that aspect of it. And I don't know if teams can replicate it. You know, like with the Warriors back in the day with KD, Curry – Draymond, Clay, Iguodala, like you have three of the best shooters ever on one team. Like you're not going to be able to replicate that. I don't care about. I don't care what Houston tried to do. You're not going to be able to literally do a copycat of their system because you don't have that personnel. You don't have a Kevin Durant. You don't have a Curry. You don't have a Klay Thompson. You can run the same exact system, but it's not going to give you the same results because at the end of the day, you need the players. You need the, the type of players that make it unstoppable, make it a, a, a championship team. And with the Celtics, here, like you have to build a team that can stop what they do. Mm. Do I believe... My, th- my thing with the Celtics, are they the standard? 
are they the team that teams should really fear the most? Is my question. Like when you're when you're building, like if you're a Western Conference team and you're looking at this off season, should you base your? I mean, you pretty much you pretty much um, talked about this, but in terms of like your roster construction on beating the Boston Celtics, or should you just worry about the West right now? Because the West is a hellhole. Like it's you got Denver, you have the Mavericks, you have the Timberwolves. Like how 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 should you go about it? And it, it's such it's such a great time for basketball because there's so many different teams that are built differently. In twenty, I would say around twenty eighteen, everybody was trying to be the Warriors. Everybody was Blame trying to Mike D'Antoni. Yes, yes. Houston, all these different teams were trying to be the Warriors. And if they weren't trying to be the Warriors, they just weren't good enough. They just didn't have enough talent. And now it's going back to the days where every team feels different. Like there's a different style, there's a different personnel, there's a different way of doing things. There's always going to be the evolution of shooting and shot attempts from like, a three point line. Feels it feels not well, obviously the hoops quality ain't the same, but as far as different teams, it feels like the early two thousand tens. Yeah, where you had you had like the Spurs, you had the Heat, you had the Lakers, you had the Grizzlies, you had the Pacers, Celtics. You know, those type of teams where everyone's had the unique style of ball. Yeah, and that's what it's getting back to. But the only dip, the only thing that stays the same and why the Warriors, why Stephen Curry is such a difference maker in this league is the three-point shot and just the evolution. And, you know, now teams are chucking up so many more threes than ever before. And with the league and the way that it's going, I just love that we're getting into a place where now matchups matter. Now we can get into basketball analysis and really breaking down, okay, what advantage does this team have? What what disadvantage does this team have? And it's def it's so it's such a great it's such great that we really for each contender how are they going to construct their roster and what teams do they fear the most? That, like, with Denver, like, how are they going to, you know, you just resigned Murray to that, that big deal. I think, I think he got, like, 211, 211 million off over, I think it may be in the four or five years. How how are they going to construct their roster? Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And they they just traded KCP or something. I think. I th- I, well, they released, nah, they, 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 let him, they just let him they walk. Just, yeah, they just let him walk. Yeah, because it's going to demand a lot of money. Okay. So and then they they traded for somebody. Did they trade? They him? traded Reggie Jackson for some picks. Right, right. But I think I think did they bring somebody else? I don't somewhere? think I don't think so. I can't think of anybody that got traded. But yeah, like some like a team like Denver. Like how are you gonna after after you lost to the Timberwolves? Like how what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do after that? Speaking of just the way that the league is going, the NBA draft, this is probably the first draft that I cared about the second round. And the reason why I brought up the NFL comparison is because from now on, a lot of teams that are trying to compete are really going to use the draft because of the new CBA. You brought up CJ McCollum, you brought up Grant Williams in the new CBA and how the whole luxury tax situation and the soft cap, hard cap. It's going to be very hard for teams to re-sign players, re-sign great players, good players, quality role players, because they're going to demand a lot of money. And I know I said Rob Palenka, I don't want to hear those excuses, but to some degree he's right. It is a lot harder trying to build a roster, trying to make different deals because of the restrictions from the new CBA. That's why the the NBA draft is so important. Even though this draft, you could say, was lackluster, the talent level wasn't really as good as previous drafts, you still have to pay attention to the way that teams are constructing their roster, who they replace, who they draft to replace, the player that they can't resign. It's very important. And with this NBA draft, it was the first time where I was really paying attention 
to how teams operate and what talent, what what players that they value the most for their team and who do they think and and the direction that they're going into. So for the Lakers, Dalton Connect was a home run for them because he can score, he can move without the basketball. Yeah, he's 23, but what's weird, well, it's not really weird because teams do this all the time. Because he's 23, because he's been in college for like 4 years, teams aren't don't value him as much so he's going to slide even though he was projected in the top 10 and he he had like six 30 plus point games i think last year so he could score with the best of them he's a perfect fit because he doesn't need the ball to score Mm -hmm. he 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 can move without the basketball you can he can you can put him in a corner lebron you know he's going to get them corner assist and he he'll he'll thrive. He'll get he'll get playing time because he's ready to go right away. And I think from now on, what we're gonna see from the NBA draft is a bunch of teams do exactly what these GMs do in the NFL, where if they don't want to resign a wide receiver, they don't want to resign a corner, a linebacker, they'll replace that player in the NBA draft. And they'll get a guy that's seasoned, that's been in the that's been in college for four years, and that's ready to go right away, and they're going to plug them in into their rotation. That's interesting. I think that's what's gonna happen from now on. So, I mean So the draft, you're saying the draft will be more important going forward with this new CBA? Absolutely, because the way that it's going, the salary cap situation and the restrictions that you have these teams are not going to want to re-sign a KCP for $20 million a year. Not a role player like that. So, like, you look at the Nuggets. They're not going to re-sign KCP because he's going to demand so much money. Derek White, I don't know what his contract situation is, but I heard that he, he he's going to get maybe 30 M's a year. He possibly get 30 M's a year. So, with that reality, with role players making all that money, there's no way in hell that these teams are just going to stand by and say, hey, we'll resign you and we'll go over the luxury tax. That's not going to happen because yeah. the luxury tax, I think after the first apron, once you once you are around that second apron, like the luxury tax just exponentially grows. And you, we already know teams do not want to get to that second apron. And especially a franchise – like the Lakers, with an owner that's not as wealthy, that's one of the poorest, I'm not going to say poorest, but one of the least wealthy owners in the NBA. Like, you, you look at Steve Ballmer, the dude is worth over $20 billion. Loaded. Loaded. The, the, the richest owner in the NBA. He can buy, like, damn near half of the teams. With Jeannie Buss, she, she doesn't have those pockets, so... She's not going to want to go over the luxury tax a whole lot because she doesn't have that cap, capital. Cap, cap, mm-hmm. Yeah, that type of capital. And you're in L.A., so the, oh, the taxes yeah. are ridiculous. It's like, man. So, yeah, man, like it, the, the NBA draft is going to be very important. Another thing. Oh, yeah. How, how you feel about that? Like just that situation? I think that's a I think it's a good thing. The draft being more important, probably why they wanted to make it a two day event. So over time, where over years, they probably want to build up the draft to be this bigger thing because teams are probably going to rely on it more mm-hmm. going in the future. So, I mean, it makes sense to me. I mean, the draft should always be important. You know, it all should be this grand theme thing for teams to build the roster, regroup, get bring in new guys, mold them into the players they uh, project to be in the league. It's always a great thing. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. I have, I do think, I've seen teams like the, um, I focused on the draft, not like the actual players. I didn't know most of these dudes going to draft them. But I noticed how teams were moving, the trades being made, the type of players that were getting selected. And I was like, hmm, this is very interesting. Yeah. Because before it just seemed like, okay, player was made, he made the pick, okay, whatever, we on to the next. But now it's more like, it seems like a lot of GMs are trying to draft with a plan instead of usually they would just go BPA. Yeah. But it seems like these teams are like uh, teams were getting players were getting passed on. People were like why are they falling? But it's but when you looked at them like besides the Bucks, the Bucks I don't know what the heck they drafting for. But it seems like teams are more drafting with a plan instead of just taking oh this guy seems like the best player I'm gonna just take him. 
Yeah, man. Um, I, I I think the I think it's this is great not only f- for just I think the NBA GMs have been getting away, especially when it comes to super teams. They've been getting away with just like, oh, you know, we're just gonna give this these players so much money and we'll go over the luxury tax and it's all good. Now GMs are gonna have to really do their homework. They're gonna have to really get in there and grind to try to find a way to build a good contender, a good roster. And with the way that it's going, I love it because, well, I'm not going to say I love it, but I like just how (laughs) us as a fan, we have to really pay attention to all of the little things that go into creating a roster instead of just players just teaming up and we're just going to have a super team and it doesn't really matter how how the bench is going to look you know because we got a super team like no 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 you have to build a roster now and with the draft it's the first time i cared about the second round i'd never cared about the second round i always thought you know second round is what it is like we don't really know these dudes too much and they're not that good but now just putting everything in perspective it made me realize one just how hard it is to get into the NBA. Mm-hmm. There's only 58 picks in the NBA draft. I thought it was like 60 because, you know, you have 30 in the first round. Right. But second round, it only goes up to 58. So it's two less picks than the first round. I didn't know that. That's that's interesting. Because it used to be, I think it used to be like seven rounds until like, I forget what year it was, but it used to be like seven rounds back in the day. Like mm-hmm. the NFL, but then they changed it, and now it's two rounds. They may they may increase it one one year, but it's just overall, it's only two rounds, and it goes up to fifty eight picks. What was your biggest surprise? Just your biggest surprises from the NBA draft. One of the surprises I had was the I'm, I'm a Wizards fan. Obviously, we traded back up into we traded up to. Fourteen, I believe, mm-hmm. before the draft even started, we got rid of, we got rid of Denny, Advia. People yeah. was upset, like he was like um freaking Gary Payton or something. I don't, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm like, who do like y'all he was think? Caruso. Yeah, I'm like, who do y'all think this dude is? Like, I've seen him play; he's good, but like, y'all like he was like going to be a star player or something. Like, he's he's a solid role player. That's what he is, and, and we got two firsts from it. And yeah. then we got a, a a guy that people projected was going to go in, a, in the lottery. So I'm, I'm confused. But, yeah, I like the Wizards. They traded back up. The new GM, I'm I'm very excited for the plan they have for the team because it seems like compared to the old regime, they have a real plan and what kind of players they want to see in this basketball team. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to – how they construct this roster going forward because they got the best player in the draft, in my opinion, Alex Sarr. Oh, and Sarge. he went to uh, – thank you, Atlanta, for taking uh, – take Zachary, Zachary Richard Say. I don't know what y'all was thinking. I saw the jump where they said uh, his strengths – it was only one strength and the rest was just weaknesses. I said, <laughs> what? I'm like, oh, my goodness, y'all drafted French Josh Giddy. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, I was like I, – I saw some, like, tape of Zachary. I was like, he, he's – He's all. He looks good. Everyone looks good in highlights, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. when you really break down, I'm like, eh. it's a loop. Shout you out to Frank some. Mason, former Kansas guard, said mm-hmm. about Zachary Richardson because he he played him. Seemed, I think he played him overseas. Yep. And he was like, he was the number one pick. <laughs> they, they, they said it's a weak draft class, one of the weakest draft class in history. But yeah, man. And then what else? What else happened? Oh yeah, the Timberwolves. Yeah, he, Timbo's trading up. trading up to get Rob Dillingham. That I like, is, I like that. and, and you know, I like it because remember we were saying they need a guy that can get a bucket. Yeah, they do. And they they say you know we're gonna go out and do that in the draft. We're not gonna play around with these free agencies paying them twenty mil plus. And this really wasn't even really guys out there like that. Mm-hmm. They say you know what we're gonna take the young guy. We got a young roster. The contracts aren't insane as of right now. We're not even paying Ant all that money. Wait, did they give they pay? Ant? I don't. I, I don't know. I don't think so. If they are, it, they should. They should be paying yeah. that. Um, let me see, Anthony Edwards. Because usually, like, usually they try they, to get a uh, deal like did. like the third year. So they probably did. Let me Either see. way, the contracts aren't aren't too outraged. We still got a young roster. We got players like Nas Reed, and we just need a guy that can consistently create a shot. Maybe they'll try to mold him over the years so he could come and start instead of Mike Conley. 
So I, I, that was a really good move in my yeah, they opinion. Signed, they signed at $204 million. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's good. That's a, that's a good deal. Shoot, what, compared to OG Anunoby, saved a couple million dollars. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, man, I, I really like that move for them. And obviously, the Lakers made a good pick. He's he's gonna he's definitely gonna get a lot of burn for y'all, and I'm pretty sure JJ Redick he already knows how he's gonna utilize him and what type of sets he's gonna and like off ball movement and everything like that. So, uh, who else? Who else? Zach Eady. Oh yeah, who who drafted Zach Eady? Memphis. The, Memphis. That at ten, I was I was shocked. Uh, I don't know how that's gonna work. I wonder. I really do. Yeah. Um. Shout out to them, I guess. Yeah, shout out to them because I didn't want because they were projected. He was projected to go to Lakers. So I did not want him to go. To yeah, Lakers. I was like, I guess we'll have to see. I'm not Zach Eady. I'm not a huge. I'm not huge on Zach Eady. I don't think his game is really going to translate that well into the league. He's like he's slow. He's yes, he's tall, but he's kind of slow. He doesn't really have like. You know, he's you no. Know, I'm just not a big fan of his game. Watching Purdue, I was like, he's all right. Yeah, all right, but yeah, ain't yeah. nothing special. Yeah. And um, somebody drafted, who was the fourth pick? The fourth pick was, was that the UConn dude? Yeah. Was it Klingon? No, not. No, no, no. no, 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 no not came, Klingon came, came later. What's his name? Hold on. I had the draft. I forgot his name. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I had the draft two right here. Uh, it was Stephen Castle. Connecticut Spurs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't know what people thought about that. Pick. I don't know what that fan base thought about. I don't really know these guys. So it's, it's obviously was that the right pick at that? I don't, I don't know. Oh, you because, don't know because I wasn't really again like me college wasn't really watching. I know college about too much. I know about NFL draft. College, and don't ask me about no NBA draft. Yeah, don't <laughs> don't ask me about no NBA draft. I will I will say he's a great defend. I heard he's like a really good defender. He he's okay. he works hard. You know the Spurs, they need they need defense. And they shouldn't have traded that pick to the Timberwolves, though. I know they should have just you should let the Timberwolves just get a pure a certified bucket. Yeah, I don't I don't know why they. Anywho, but yeah, man, I think the draft. I mean, they night one the draft was pretty cool. I ain't watch it. I, I'm gonna be. Honest, I was waiting for the notification to pop up on my oh, phone. Oh really? I, I did not it. watch. I was it. watching it. Mm-hmm. I the only draft I watch is the NFL. Okay. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. I mean, me, I was watching it because um, I was wondering where Zach Eady was going to go, and I was wondering uh, <laughs> who the Lakers were going to pick. But that, that's all I really cared for. Um, Seemed a lot of players failed that weren't supposed to. Like that. Like Connect. Connect is that how you Yeah, it? Dalton Connect. Yeah, Connect. Who else? Um, I forgot his name. The Jazz drafted him. Oh, you talking about Cal Phillips? Yeah. yeah. And also. Yeah. 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 A bunch of. You know, yeah, Game of Thrones, of, something, something going on. Yeah, no, it was someone else though. It was someone else. Um, you go in the first or second round? Uh, he went in the first. He went like late first. I forgot late his first. name, but people uh, Collier. C- 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 I think that's his name. I know. I know you. Saying, yeah. I know you saying uh, Isaiah Collier. Collier. Yeah. yeah. USC Jazz mm-hmm. drafted him. Yeah. So the Jazz did draft him. Yeah. So yeah, it's a. I'm interested to see. I wish I could. I wish we could get an inside. Into the, the the way they go about the draft process to see why players with talent fall in the draft and why players who aren't that talented rise in the draft. Yeah, it's um, a very interesting. I, I really wish we could see that side of it. A lot of this age, a lot of it is they look at certain talent, certain qualities that they have, and they say, okay, they are a pro- project, but if we teach them, if they improve on this, we believe that they'll eventually become the player that we picture them to be. And it's, it's all about upside at the end of the day. Yeah. It's just like NFL. But like. the Bucks are absolutely lunching. Like, what are they? I, I saw. AJ Johnson. Yeah, I, I'm like, what does he do well? I see in this clip, he was, Scotty Barnes was guarding. I know Scotty Barnes is an NBA player, a good NBA player at that. But, like, he couldn't get past him. No, I'm like, he these are the type of dudes he's going to be playing. And there's better players than Scotty Barnes. Like, I don't understand what they was doing. That was a wasted pick. You might as well just traded that if you was going to draft him. Because, like, I don't see him getting no run for real. We're going to be, he's just going to be in the G League the whole time. I'm confused. Yeah. Who? I don't even. Yeah. He averaged two, po- two, two point points. Nine points. How old is he? Like, he's born in 2004, so I'm assuming he's like 19. Yeah. He's about 19. 
I feel like I feel like with the Bucks, you have to draft somebody that's like experienced that's been in the, that's been in college for like three, four years. Like my my thing with these teams is that if you're trying to compete for a championship, you need a player that can you can plug in and can be in a rotation now. And with the Bucks, with all these other teams, I feel like what the Lakers did was smart. They were fortunate that Dalton Connect was able to slide all the way down to seventeen. But somebody like that, where they've been in they've been in college for like three, four years, and they have a skill set that can easily translate in the NBA. You can plug and play them right now, put them in your rotation, and you'll save money because again, with all these role players that are getting paid a high amount of money in the league, if you're getting a guy that can come in, be a quality role player for you, can be in the rotation, you're saving money. And I feel like with a lot of these teams that are trying to compete for a championship and they're going after a young guy, I, I just think it's a mistake. I just don't I, I just I just don't believe in that philosophy because they're not gonna get any playing time. And the best way for a player to improve is getting playing time. And when you're trying to win a championship, you're not trying to put young guys on the court. Mm. And that's that's where a lot of these teams end up having players that become busts for them because they're not getting no playing time. Like, how do you expect a player to improve if they're not getting any playing time? You need somebody that is ready to go, that's polished, that understands the game, understands how to win, to play now. So, that yeah, I agree with you. I, I don't understand that pick. Um, I don't know how to make the, the breaking news a sound. It says, according to Shams, LeBron James to decline player option expected to re-sign with the Lakers. As expected. I mean. You think he'll take our, because from what I heard, they say he's getting 200 plus if he were to re-sign. 200 M's for probably for three years? Yeah. I mean, I'm, my belief, I don't. first of all, there's no 200 M's, there's no way. Yeah, I'm thinking he's getting paid like. 55 million per year so over three years so that what would that be that'd be 50 so that's like that's like 175 yeah so that's what i believe he's gonna get 200 m's for three years i mean don't get me wrong lebron is lebron but come on now like 200 m's that's 66 that much money what hell yeah man lebron lebron does he want to win or not he does when he wanted money too. Well, 60, can't have your cake and 60, eat it. 66 million a year? Like, no, nah, there's no way we're giving him 66 million. My belief he'll get 55 M's a year, and that will be 165 million over three over three seasons. I believe that's what's going to be the deal. And yeah, man, that that's what I think is going to happen. 200 M's is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah. For three um, years, that's good. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's just my belief. Also, you you got to remember, so Russell Westbrook, he he's going in free agency as well. I guess I guess LeBron wasn't the problem. I guess the Lakers weren't the problem because I was looking at some of these accounts from the clip, you know, Clippers fans, and they were like, "Thank good good riddance of these Russell Westbrook stands." But now now you understand. Now you understand my pain, all the other Laker fans' pain because we were saying this. All along about Russell Westbrook and his fans, in his stands. They're annoying. They're delusional. Russell Westbrook's delusional. He thinks he's still that guy he was in OKC and that he can translate it on a winning team. No, he's not. And, hey, you reap what you sow. But, yeah, man, that that's really what I wanted to say about the NBA draft and some of the surprises. Everything else, I was just pretty much like, okay, like, yeah, the NBA draft is going to be important for years to come, and we, we have to really pay attention to what goes on. The, the NCAA needs to do a better job promoting these players because th- this is this is a huge, a huge deal. Like, now a lot of these college players are more important than ever. Like, people are going to have to care more about these college players. You know it's bad when I knew more WNBA prospects coming into the draft than NBA. Yeah, it's bad because – they don't – a lot of these players, they, they're one and done. Or they go to the G League or they go overseas. Like, man, three French players in the lottery? Yeah. 
And then last year it was your boy, your boy Bilal and Wemby. Yeah. So yeah, man, it's it's a lot of foreign players. And that's another thing, like just the amount of foreign players in this draft is unbelievable. And the fact that was it was it the the top three? Was it it was Zachary, Alex Sar no excuse me, the top two. Mm were foreign. Zachary Richet and Alex Sars was foreign. That's unheard of. That's, no, that, that's that's really unheard of because I think they said the la- the they said the last time two players got drafted the t- the first two picks were had no college experience was 2003. And that was cuz LeBron and oh, I forgot his name. There was another there was another high I school forgot. player. In, in the no overseas. Oh, overseas. Oh, that that's the guy who went before Melo. That was uh, ah, he went to the Pistons. God damn, I forgot his Bar-Yani? name. Bariani? No, no, Bariani. I think was the year after. It was what's his name? Uh, ah, I forgot his name. God damn, I know. I'm a basketball fan, and I can't remember the number two pick of the 2003 <laughs> draft. I should be ashamed of myself. Two three NBA draft. I should be ashamed of myself. He went to the Pistons too. It was Darko. Darko Milicic. Yeah, Milicic. yeah, yeah, him. Yep. Milicic, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, just a bunch of foreign players. I mean, like the guy that the, the Hornets drafted. Yeah, it's just a bunch of foreign players, man. Like it's it's crazy. Well, the Americans better step it up. Yeah, they they really need to because right now the way that it's going. Blame AAU. Foreign. Yeah, you got to blame AAU. You got to. For the fact, and then also college, and the fact that they weren't, they were reluctant to pay their players until recently. And also these college coaches, you have to adapt. You yeah. have to allow these players to, you can't just say, this is my system, it's my way or the highway. Like You have to adapt at a certain point. You can't just be like, yo, like we're going to have you only doing this. Like a Calipari, like don't, like Calipari, he, he, he be getting these players in the league now, but a lot of these players that be in Kentucky, I be looking at them I'm like, are they really that good? And then all of a sudden they get in the league, and it's just like, damn, you were not doing this in college. Like, he was really holding you back. So, a lot of these college players, man, they, they, just be, they just be handcuffing these players, not wanting to have them unleash their talent at certain points. Let's go on. Let's transition. What do we got? What else we got up in here? The biggest questions entering NBA free agency. We need, we need to talk about Bronny James real quick. Hold on. Before we transition. So, how did you feel about Bronny James getting selected to the Lakers? I mean, everybody knew it was going to happen. Like, the writing was on the wall forever. And anyone who's shocked or surprised, you haven't been paying attention. Everyone knew it was going to. Even if he didn't get drafted, he was going to go there in free agency. So, as a, I mean, un, un, as an undrafted free agent. I mean, come on now. But I mean, it is what it is. I don't. I mean, it's the fifty-fifth pick. It was only three other picks left to be made. Who really cares? Like the fake outrage is annoying. I think he was the fifty-fourth best prospect. I mean, hey, hey, that sounds about right to me. So I mean, hey, I mean, LeBron probably said, "Hey, you draft my son," or the Lakers said, "Just went on their own and just wanted to draft him." Who knows? But my thing is, I don't have many opinions on it because I don't expect him to get playing time over anybody else on that roster. Mm-hmm. So, it is what it is. I think they just did it for the feel good story, I guess. So, Bomani Jones, former ESPN commentator, he went on Twitter and he was outraged by just the hypocrisy of it all when it comes to black people and the fact and and the conversation revolving around nepotism because of Jay Williams, he went on first take and he was talking about nepotism when it comes to Bronny James being picked because, you know, he got LeBron, he's on the Lakers and the influence that he has and the power that he has that clutch has as well, especially rich Paul. And, you know, they talked about nepotism and how, you know, a lot of, Folks, especially people that are a lot lighter than black people, have certain powers, have certain abilities. We already know with the Cowboys, nepotism is it just wreaks itself in that franchise. And he 
pretty much the whole conversation was, well, white people are doing it all all the time, and why 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 do we why should we have a problem when one black person is doing it, especially a guy like LeBron James is pretty much got you know helping his son get into the league, getting on his team, and pretty much having some sort of nepotism involved in that. And Bomani Jones, he pretty much was coming from a perspective of it doesn't matter who it is. Nepotism is bad in general. We should all have a fair shot. And I get I, I get where you come from. You're absolutely right. But at the end of the day, he was the 54th best prospect. I mean, yeah. and he was selected 55. <laughs> it's not that hard to comprehend that maybe, just maybe, the pick was okay at that spot, especially in the second round. If you're like the 54th, 55 best prospect in the draft, I don't find anything wrong with it. Yeah, it was nothing fishy or suspicious about it. Now, if he would have got drafted in the first round, that would have been, been a completely different conversation, whatever. But it's the 50, it's the back, the back, back, back end of the draft. Yeah, literally, like who, there was like. Who, who really cares for? It's like three more picks and, after and, that. And if y'all think Bronny shouldn't have got drafted, who should the Lakers have drafted then? Exactly. I bet you they can't name a single player. Nah, nah, man. It's not. It's not too many players out there left. Really. I mean, it's like three more picks after that, and the draft is over. So, yeah. I mean, so people just this just fake out. People just don't like LeBron. Yeah, they and they I'm, don't. I'm a LeBron hater. You are allegedly. No, nah, um, it's not allegedly. It's um, facts. But I don't care about this. Is minuscule. Like this is just, this is just a feel good story in my eyes. Yeah. Good PR. Yeah, I mean it's good. And for folks that didn't think Ronnie was gonna get drafted to the Lakers, I mean you don't know the Lakers, bro. Like the Lakers, they're all about gimmicks. They're all about being the first. You know, I I saw the Lakers. I remember the end of the season they brought in a G League guy who never played on the pro level in the NBA. I'm talking about Andre, Andre Ingram. Ingram, the legend, and it, and it was like Lakers a, legend, a feel good story. He was like a, I think he may have been he a, a teacher. teacher yeah. He was a teacher and everything. And, you know, they, they had him starting and getting all the minutes. Like, they do stuff like this. He dropped like 20-something that game, too. They traded for Isaiah Thomas when he was cooked food. Like, they do stuff like this all the time where they want they want good PR. They're like, oh, this is good PR. Let's do it. The same thing with Bronny James. Like, this is good PR. We'll get a lot of attention. We'll get a lot of buzz. And it will be good publicity. And also having LeBron on the roster as well. He's going to bring a lot of money to the table. He's going to bring a lot of attention to us. Because before LeBron, we had six years of purgatory. So now we're back to where we've always been. It's all about entertainment. It's all about good PR, appeasing fans. And that's that. And for Bronny to be on the Lakers, I'm not shocked at all. I don't see him playing, playing at all. The only time... He has a chance to play is at the end of the season, when, like the last game, if we already clinch a playoff spot and we already clinch our seeding. Then he may get a shot to play because that's normally when they, they get the, the bench warmers, the guys that aren't getting any minutes, and they go out there and play like a Malachi yeah. Flynn and he'll drop 50. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and I, it, one thing I got to say about this, and I'm quite disappointed in LeBron for this, especially because the situation allegedly happened to him. How dare you? What? How dare you sleep with your teammate's mom, man? What's wrong with you? Oh. What's wrong with you? Like, what? <laughs> that was just a plot twist? <laughs> I was just playing. I, know. Yeah, I, was like, yeah. I was like, hold on. What, what, what's going on? Like, calling out LeBron. But yeah, man. Like, yeah, like. I think man. as far as playing, which is playing. Wait, I was about to sound crazy. Being able to play the same team as your son. First time that's happened in league history. Yeah, Because yeah. nobody had that longevity like LeBron. Yeah, gener generally, it would be like... Like baseball that happened. Yeah. Ken Griffey and his pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then if you look at it, like, there's been, there's been times where, like, a player has played for his pops, and the pops was his the coach. So, yeah. like, Mike Dunleavy, you have Mike Dunleavy Jr., Austin Rivers, yeah, yep. So it, it, there's been times there's where been that's There's been players happened. that got boosted in draft because of their fathers played in the league, like Clay Thompson. You know, Clay Thompson was good. Obviously, Steph Curry. You know, Steph Curry was really good. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, stuff like that. Playing with your brother, like it's happened before. Like Blake mm -hmm. Griffin, he played with his. Look brother. at the Nasus. Yeah, 
Dan, yeah, Thanasis and um, Alex. Alex, yeah. Costas. Yeah. Stephen Curry, he played with his, his brother, Steph Curry. Like, it's ha- it's happened. But it turns a father and son playing on the same court. It's never happened before. And that's that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And I, I hope we can see it one day. And I hope Bronny James, I hope he lives his dream. I hope he becomes a quality player for the Los Angeles Lakers and not just a, a, a nice cases. little a, a, a yeah. nice little story. Yeah. Uh, you know, 15 minutes of fame. You could say them South them South Bay Lakers G League tickets going through the roof. Oh my god! Oh summer league, summer, summer league, league is going to yeah. be interesting. It's yeah, be, summer league got Dalton Connect and Bronny James. Oh yeah, summer league is going to go we crazy. See some things. Yeah, summer league is going to go really crazy. I can't wait to see that. I'm definitely watching my woods at summer league. Are you, you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good and stuff, man. But yeah, bro, like I, I have no problem with it. And anybody that does, you can go kick rocks. <laughs> Seriously, like you're just you can just go kick rocks. And also the people that were outraged with Stephen A and his list, I mean, who like so what? Like I, I mean that is like that is kind of foolish. It is we we foolish. why why not talk about the top draft picks? Why are we talking about what a player's gonna call like come on now. We know, gotta do better with the it, sports it, journalism. It, it is kinda weird. It is kinda weird. He could have kept that he could have kept saved that for his podcast. It didn't have to be on national television. Yeah, I mean, like how, what, what is Bronny gonna call his dad? Pops. The top five, top five the names he'll call his dad like Pops, old man. Was it Bron? Bron? Yeah. Twenty was a two three, and one of them was Daddy Pauls. Nah, I, don't, I didn't think. He I, I I swear I saw I thought it was up there. Nah, I so thought it was up it, there. It was Bron. It was old. It was. It was Bron. Bron. It was old man. It was Pops. It was two three. And then it's like one more. Let me see. Uh, Afri- uh, Afri- no. Oh, it was Captain. It was oh, yeah, it was Captain. So, I mean, old man, I guess you can call him old man or I don't know. I don't know. God. The list was, let me see. It was Pops, Old Man, Bron Bron, 2, 3, Captain. Yeah. I mean, if I was in Bronny's si- Bron, Bron. If, if I was in Bronny's situation, I'll just call him old man. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't call him. I say old man to two three. I wouldn't call him pops. Yeah, I say old man to two like three. Because like, like I, I've been, you know, you hear stories about how like, especially. I mean, for for one, if you ever watched Coach Carter, it's it's a good example. But like in terms of your father being a coach and you're playing for your father, I mean, I've I've heard like, you know, the son will call him coach or the son will call him. You know, whatever it is, but they won't call him like dad or anything like that because mm. it's just weird. Like you're True. around your call him OG. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean that's a good one. That's a good one. OG, call him old man. Bron Bron, that just sounds. Uh, I can honestly, I could see him calling him that. Honestly, I I could, but not on the team though. Like him, like if he was, you know how like he'll be at games and he'll be on the sideline. Like I could see him say that. As like a joke, but like Let's I wouldn't. Go, Bron, Bron. <laughs> I wouldn't see him calling him that on the team. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel like I could see him probably saying "man." I could see him like maybe cap, maybe cap. But that's about. I don't like. The Any real who, question is what they gonna call Bronny on the team? Are they gonna call him Bronny? See that? That's too close to Bron, though. What? They should call him Jr. or something. <laughs> Cause they he could, is a junior. They could call him Jr. Yeah. They could call him Jr. <laughs> this thing, what are we talking well, about? Who cares, man? Who cares? Yeah, biggest question. Let's before. Yeah, biggest questions entering free agency. I want to know what the if the Bulls are going to complete and commit to a full rebuild. Mm. That's what I want to know mm-hmm. because they've been teetering that line of trying to be contenders and they're not really contenders. They just need to see the writing on the wall. They already got rid of Caruso. I think you just tear it completely down because at this point, I don't really think it's going anywhere. I want to see if the Lakers are going to be able to make any actual moves mm-hmm. to really move the needle for the for the uh, current roster. But the way Rob Palenka has been operating these past few years, I don't know about all that. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to see what happens with the Paul George stuff going on. They say he wants to say he wants to stay in L.A., but then on a podcast, the few notes up this dude. I saw I heard some things about Klay Thompson possibly going to the Nuggets. Yeah. I'm like, why would 
you already got Michael Porter Jr. Do you really need Clay Thompson? Yeah, I mean, because you're losing Contavious Caldwell Pope. True, but so you need some shooting on the on the. Guard that is true, but Clay is. Hey, with the Nuggets, you never know. True, that is true. The Mike Nuggets, Malone, new system. Know. Mike Malone. And what else? What else? If the Hawks are going to move Trey Young, yeah, I'm. I I doubt it. Well, I don't doubt it. I don't it's know. just no. I don't know, man. It's iffy. I also, would trade him. I mean, I, I'm honestly at this point. I, I mean, would trade him, especially really if you try to, especially next year's draft. You want to try to get Cooper Flag. True. I would try to True. trade him. Also, want to know that now that the Pelicans have Dejounte Murray, are they more likely to move Brandon Ingram or to keep him? That's that's interesting. Because I, I don't think the Zion Brandon Ingram dynamic works. I just don't think it it does because <sighs> Brandon Ingram's he, inconsistent. He's not really the guy people expected him to be, mm-hmm. and stuff. So I'm like. And Zion is the better player. Yeah, when he he's healthy easily, on the court, he's the better player. Easily better player. And I feel, I feel like that's a great point because you look at the position, the wing position for them. You have Herb Jones and you have that other guy. What's his name? That starts or comes? Yeah, he starts. Trey he starts. Murphy? Trey, Trey Murphy, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have those two dudes who are quality wing players that can defend. I think with Brandon Ingram, you should. They should trade him. You because you bring in Dejounte Murray. You have a guard that can score, that can complement Zion, and then you have CJ as well that you could also trade. I think. Oh I, yeah, CJ. Yeah, CJ got to go. I'm sorry. I think. I think with the Pelicans, like with Brandon Ingram, he's so unreliable that you need to surround Zion Williamson with defense, with defenders, with guys that can shoot on the perimeter. I feel like Brandon Ingram is eventually going to have to go. He's going to have to go this offseason. And I'm really curious to see how the Pelicans move with this DeJounte Murray trade. Exactly. It changed just a lot for them because if they didn't trade for DeJounte Murray, they were, boy, it was going to be it was gonna be very difficult for them to really do do something. And yeah, so this changes a lot. Yeah, and um. The Warriors, obviously, what the heck they got going on yeah, over there? They they, they they wasn't willing to get rid of Kaminga for for Paul George. I'm like, are you serious? Mm-hmm. Like Kaminga, he he has potential, but Paul George is a solidified star. And granted, he drops in the playoffs, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the Warriors got going on. They now they trying to talk about trying to do uh, Andrew Wiggins trade with mm-hmm. um, what team was that? Yeah, I don't know. I've it was heard. like it was like kind of like a swap. It was it was some goofy. I was yeah, like, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Miami Heat. Yeah. The Jimmy Butler's thing. Is he gonna stay? Exactly. Go. Yeah. This is a lot of interesting things going on. I, I'm looking forward to see the madness unfold. Mm-hmm. But in the mean, in the waiting room for NFL. See, at least we get hard knocks early. At least we'll see some football stuff. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. I may be missing some stuff, but, you know, that's pretty much sums it up. I think for me, when it comes to free agency, I'm looking at it from, okay, the teams that I believe that are trying to compete for a championship, I'm looking at the Oklahoma City Thunder. What are they going to do? You bring in Alice Caruso. What other moves are you gonna make to try to solidify your team? They need into another big. The, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's that's one of the things. How are they gonna better improve this roster to compete? Because you got the number one seed here. You you made it to the second round. You you went to six games with the the Western Conference champ. How are you going to put your team over the top? Is my question because you need you need another score. Shea. It's fantastic. He he's he's a one A for you. He, he can be the number one option. But you need somebody else to compliment Shea. Is that Brandon Ingram? Who who is that? Because you can't rely on Lou Dort. You can't rely on a Chet Holmgren just yet. He's still not there. So who are you gonna bring in that can get buckets for you? That can add to whatever you're building in OKC. That's number one. Is it Paul George? Hmm. That, that could be an interesting one. But yeah, I don't know how that relationship yeah, 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 is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but yeah, the Thunder, Thunder. I'm looking at them because they could they could elevate themselves to the best team of the West with one move, one or two moves. I'm looking at Denver. You know, not being able to resign Contavious Caldwell Pope. 
losing to the Timberwolves, not having the strongest bench last year. How, how are you going to address that? Because, you know, you won the championship. You have the best player in the world. You have, you have like I said, like I said with Jamal Murray, he's the driver of the vehicle, and, and Jokic is the engine. You have that one-two punch. How are you going to add to that? You have a nice starting five. You have a really solid starting five, minus Contavious Caldwell Pope. It's just about adding. It's just about addressing certain needs. How will the Denver Nuggets improve in order to get back to where they once were in 2023, winning a championship? Uh, the Timberwolves, we, we saw it with was Rob Dillingham. He's an excellent piece, but he's a rookie. Right. What, what other moves are you going to make? Are you going to keep Carnathy Towns? Are you going to change up the system? Because we saw in the playoffs that system – it only got you to a certain point before you went up against the Mavericks, and they were able to take advantage of just how limited the system is. Yeah. You know, you got Ant, you know, a bunch of pick and roll, a bunch of guys not really moving, not really cutting. The spacing was off with 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 Rudy Gobert at times. How are you going to address that? How are you going to improve the roster offensively and defensively, and in terms of play style? The Lakers. Obviously, we talked about this before. You have LeBron, you have AD still playing at a superstar level. How are you going to surround those players? You can't keep the same team that you had the previous year because we saw their ceiling. It was five games versus the Denver Nuggets first round and out. With J- you have J.J. Redick. It-, it seems like he wants to run an offense similar to how Denver wants to run where it comes to going to your big man and having AD run the show at times. How are you going to surround your? How are you going to surround LeBron and AD? Like, what, what are you going to do with that? Is my question. We already we already talked about the Knicks. How how the Knicks are going to improve? How are they going to put themselves in a position to be in that contender spot with the Boston Celtics, Philly? Okay, you have Embiid. You have Tyrese Maxey. Who are you going to add to that? Because. I've been hearing rumblings of Paul George, but do you really want to pay Paul George all that money? I mean, you saw what happened with Tobias Harris. You thought Tobias Harris was that guy, and he turned out to not be that guy. It was one of the worst contracts in the NBA. Do you want to do – I'm not going to say it's the same thing, but he's a declining player. He's getting up there in age. He's not what he once was. Do you want to take that risk again? Like, how are you going to do that? I feel like with Philly, I don't think they necessarily need a third star. They just need good role players because they lost to the New York Knicks. In a large part because the role players stunk. True. Like, come on now. Like, they didn't have much to offer. So, how are they going to address the needs for, you know, to surround Embiid and Tyrese Maxey? Because those those guys, we mentioned before, but I believe Embiid is top four player in the NBA. And Tyrese Maxey, he's on his way to becoming a star player. He's already an all-star caliber player. And he's all, he's going to just improve from here. So, how are you going to surround those two pieces? Um, Milwaukee... Uh, it's up in the air for them. Where they go for this. It's up in the air. I will say Lillard admitted well, not he didn't admit it. It was actually Doc Rivers. It was kind of like, whoa, yo, that's your coach now. Damian Lillard wasn't all there last year. You know, he wasn't he Doc Rivers said that he wasn't he was in the worst shape that he's ever been entering training camp. So he wasn't all the way there. How will he function this year? Will he be a better version of himself? How are you going to improve on the defense, on the um, defensive and offensive end this year? You know, it was a mistake for them to trade away Drew Holiday. It was a mistake for them to get rid of Mike Budenholzer. Okay, we 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 understand that. How how are you gonna how are you gonna address? How are you gonna improve from there? I don't know. I really don't. Are you gonna trade Bobby Portis? You're gonna trade Christian Middleton mm-hmm. to bring in another piece? Remains to be seen. <sighs> Orlando Magic, I think they're another one. Young team, made the playoffs, was the fourth seed? Fourth or fifth seed? Lost in seven games to Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah, they were, uh, they was the, they were the, I think they were the fourth or fifth. It was because they played the Cavs. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? How are you going to get better? You know, you, you've overachieved tremendously last season. How are you going to get better from here? Are you just going to stand packed and just continue to develop? Or are you going to actually add some pieces? We'll, we, we'll see. But, yeah, that, that's really all I'm really looking for. What about the Cavs? The Cavs, 
That is a good one. Will, will they give Donovan Mitchell the money that he wants? Will Donovan Mitchell, does Donovan Mitchell want to stay in Cleveland? I don't know. And then, Jared, it seems like they want to stand packed with the group that they have, just off of the reports that I've seen the cat the, the past month. Um, good me, luck with that. They brought in Kenny Atkinson. I mean, okay. Like, okay. I mean, I don't know how I feel about that. So, yeah, man, that that's really all I really care about right now. Nothing regarding the Suns. It the Matt issue, but came out and said the KD stuff was capped. So. It, se- it seems like they're going to give it another year. <sighs> I know, right? I know, right? Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant. I'd be so mad if I was a Suns fan. I think I think the Suns are just in purgatory. Like there, there's no, there's nothing much else they could really do besides getting minimum. Excuse me, getting minimum contract guys, and then just. Surrounding them with Kevin Durant, Booker, Beal. I feel like they're stuck in like 2017 right now, thinking that they can just create this fake super team to compete for a championship. I just don't. I just don't see it. So that's the, that's really what I'm looking at right now. Everybody else, like Sacramento Kings. I mean, I like I like Saponis and I like I like the Fox, but the defense it just doesn't work. They traded uh, Don- Davion Mitchell. Who wasn't really doing much for them anyway? So that was that was a dud of a pick, that was a bad pick. Uh, but yeah, man, that's that's really that's really all I'm really looking at. Miami, you already mentioned Miami Heat. What's going to happen with Jimmy Butler? Remains to be seen. How are they going to add to that team? I mean, Tyler Hero's not not a winning player. I don't I don't know how you <laughs> can just surmise that you can just keep believing that Tyler Hero is going to become a winning player for you. That's just not who he is. I mean, he hasn't been a winning player since the bubble. So, are you going to stand That bubble pack? performance was so Mickey Mouse, are it's you, not even funny. Are you going to stand pack with Tyler Hero, or are you actually going to make moves, Pat Riley? Like, you're just going to sit on your ass like Rob Palenka and just expect that the system will carry them, that – um Spo is such great, uh, such great of a coach that he could just figure out a way to use – the pieces that you have at your disposal to um, overachieve like you did in 2023. Like, you actually have to add some talent at one point. Like, you can't just rely on Spo for everything. Jimmy Butler is a great player, but he's not a top 10. He's getting older. He's getting older. He's 34. More injury prone. Bam Adebayo is a great player. Is, yeah. is a good player, but he's not no star. He's he's an all-star caliber player, but he's not no superstar. So, you have to start adding players. Who is that? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. So that's that's just how I'm feeling right now. All the other players that I, re- I really don't give a crap about. And yeah, those that's what I'm looking for in, in free agency. We're gonna you know next week we're gonna react to I think free agency is yeah, by the time by the time we come back, free agency will already have started because I think it's either the fourth or the fifth of July. So by the time we come back Free agency would have already started, so we'll react to free agency. We'll give our opinions on that. Hopefully, my Lakers make big moves coming soon. If not, I'm going to be very upset and depressed, and you're probably going to see me make a video about it. All right. That'll do it for this episode of Court Savvy Podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, hit the notification bell, follow the socials as well. And we will see you all on the next episode of the Court Savvy Podcast. View podcast. Yes, Thank you guys sir. for watching MPs. Just let me be. be, be.